creeping, slurping, smacking, splashing, snacking. Yum, 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 yum. Huh? Aquariums round the world tell tales of clever octopuses. Don't you mean octopi? No. But... Don't interrupt me. Tales of clever octopuses sneaking out of their tanks at night and devouring fish under cover of darkness. Like at the Brighton Aquarium in England. One hundred years ago, fishes would disappear from their tanks without a trace. But in the morning... The resident octopus would be lounging in their tank like nothing doing. With a smug glint in her eye. That sounds a little fishy. Oh, yeah? At the Seattle Aquarium, a giant Pacific octopus snatched several sharks and gobbled them right up. Yum, 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 yum. Making a tasty meal of the ocean's most feared creature. It's even on video. Really? Listen. Slurp smack. Slurp smack. Hear that? Yeah, that's just you making noises with your mouth. Okay, you got me. But listen. That's the sound of Inky the octopus who climbed the glass of his tank at the International Aquarium of New Zealand, crawled across the floor and slithered down a drain hole. He escaped. And that's not the only incident. You can see other octopuses escaping on the YouTubes. Are you sure it's not octopi? Octopuses. Well, it's obvious... Octopuses are super smart and sneaky. But what else are octopuses capable of? What's a day in the life like for one of these clever, squishy, sticky mollusks? And how do they catch food while also avoiding being food? It's time for an eight-armed whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. And who's smarted? Okay, first of all, why is it octopuses and not octopi? Let me break it down for you. Because octopus ends in us. Most people assume it comes from Latin, so they assume it should be the Latin plural I, as an octopi. But they would be etymologically mistaken. Huh? That's because the word octopus comes from the Greek word octo, meaning eight, and pus, meaning foot. The Greek plural would be octopuses or octopodes. Gotcha. Okay, it's octopuses. What else you got? Octopuses are known as cephalopods. Once again, coming from the Greek, cephalo, meaning head, and pods, meaning foot. Head foot. Head foot? Head foot? Think of it. What's an octopus? It's a head and lots of feet. Head feet. <sighs> Cephalopods include the octopus, the squid, the cuttlefish, and the nautilus. They're also members of the molluscan class of invertebrates. An invertebrate is an animal that doesn't have a vertebrae or spine. And mollusks make up the second largest group of invertebrates. This super diverse group includes lots of seafood adults might try to make you taste. Things like oysters, scallops, clams, and snails. Ew. There's over 85,000 species of mollusks, including our friend, the octopus. 
And these creatures of the deep have been around for many human lifetimes. The oldest known octopus fossil belongs to an animal that lived during the Carboniferous period, around 296 million years ago. So what exactly is an octopus? Let's compare one to you. Do you have one head? How about two eyes? Hmm, are you sure you're not an octopus? Let's keep going. Do you have three hearts, blue blood, eight legs covered in suckers? If you said yes to all of these, you might be a secret octopus. (gasps) Told you they're clever. But wait, did I say three hearts? That's right. Octopuses have two hearts that work exclusively to move blood beyond the animal's gills. The third heart circulates blood for their organs. Ah. The organ heart actually stops beating when the octopus swims. Which explains why octopuses get so tired from swimming. Phew, I'm beat. So how would octopuses prefer to move? Would they rather A, crawl, B, skip, or C, jump? Got your answer? Octopuses prefer to crawl. It's fun. And what about that blue blood? It seems octopuses evolved to have a copper-based blood called hemocyanin, instead of iron-based blood, hemoglobin, like humans have. Ah. This copper-based blood is more efficient at transporting oxygen when water temperature is very low and there is limited oxygen available. And it also turns their blood blue. Hmm, I do say, they don't look like aristocrats to me. Octopuses may not come from wealthy families, but they do possess a wealth of knowledge and curiosity. They love to investigate and use the suckers on their arms to feel everything their underwater world has to offer. And they're also quite playful. Aquarium staff members, researchers, and divers have all shared accounts of fun octopus interactions some even developing a rapport with their squishy friends. Whoa. One scientist reported an octopus repeatedly pushing a plastic bottle into the stream of water flowing into its tank, almost like it was bouncing a ball. Okay, we know how octopuses stack up to humans anatomy-wise, but how do we compare in the basic skills department? Play along and see if you can guess who can do each one. Ready? Here we go. Who can use tools? Humans? Octopuses? Who can solve puzzles? Humans. Octopuses. Who can breathe on land? Humans. Octopuses. Who can camouflage their skin? Humans? Or octopuses? Who can ride a bicycle? Humans? Octopuses? Who can grow new limbs? Humans. Octopuses? Who can bake cookies? Humans. Octopuses. Who can fit through a drain pipe? Humans. Octopuses. Who can unscrew bottle caps? Humans. Octopuses? Even a child-proof cap? No, your Advil is safe, but they can open a jar of spaghetti sauce. And what was that about squeezing through a drain pipe? Because octopuses have no bones, they can squeeze through the tiniest of spaces. The only hard part of an octopus's body is its beak. Yes, octopuses have beaks, similar to a parrot's beak made of chitin, the same stuff as crab claws. Their beaks are located on the underside of their head and are surrounded by their arms. This makes it easy for octopuses to pull food towards their mouths, where their scissor-like beaks can break shells and devour prey like shrimps, clams, lobsters, and fish. Octopuses use venom to paralyze or kill their prey and digest their food. Most don't have enough poison to harm people, but the small blue-ringed octopus has enough venom in its bite to paralyze a human adult in minutes. So you're probably wondering, 
Are octopuses dangerous to humans? Not really. Octopuses generally avoid humans, but they can be dangerous if provoked. In 2019, a Washington woman put a small octopus on her face for a selfie. She didn't get eaten, but she did get bit. Moral of the story, never put an octopus on your face. But you can put an octopus in your mouth and belly. In fact, Octopus is particularly popular in East Asian, Spanish, and Greek cuisines. Ah. Unfortunately, the popularity of octopus as a meal has had an impact on octopus populations, as has the rise in ocean acidification due to climate change. Whoa. When the water's pH level dips too low, <coughs> octopuses can't circulate enough oxygen to survive. <gasps> Saving our tentacled friends is just another reason why it's so important we do all that we can to protect the ocean. Very true, very true. Except for the tentacles part. Huh? Technically, octopuses do not have tentacles. They don't? But we've all seen them. They're not tentacles. And the reason is... Coming right up after this quick break. Now back to Who's Smarted? My sassy sailor friend was just telling us how octopuses technically do not have tentacles. What? But didn't an octopus use its tentacles to climb out of its tank? Well, tentacles technically have suction cups only near the end of the limb. Octopuses have suction cups the entire length of each of their eight arms. Ah. And those octopus arms are im. Impressive. They have a mind of their own. Literally. Two-thirds of an octopus's neurons reside in its arms, not in its head. So, the arms can solve puzzles and capture clams while the octopus is doing something else. <gasps> they can use their arms in combination with tools like coconut shells to capture crabs, or to protect themselves like a helmet while they scuttle across the ocean floor. And if their arms get cut off, they can just grow back. <gasps> yep. But it takes a while, about 100 to 130 days. Octopuses are known to feel and remember pain. So, it's good that they have a few ways of protecting themselves. In fact, the way octopuses protect themselves is quite magical. An octopus can change the color of its entire body in just three-tenths of a second in order to camouflage themselves. They can also mimic the color and texture of other undersea objects, like plants, coral, or rocks to completely disappear into their environment. Whoa. They control the color of their skin with special cells called chromatophores. Each chromatophore has a stretchy sac that is filled with pigment. When it's advantageous for the octopus to change color, either for hunting or hiding, its brain sends a signal to the chromatophores, which change to red, yellow, brown, or black. <sighs> and octopuses control muscles under their skin that can make it look smooth or bumpy. Shh, I'm a coral. Octopuses can also squirt ink to confound and disorient predators. By blasting a cloud of ink, it disrupts their attacker's sense of smell and taste and could cause a blinding irritation. Even with all these defense mechanisms, octopuses don't live very long. They simply have a short life cycle. For the giant Pacific octopus, the largest species, that's three to five years on average. The biggest giant Pacific octopus anyone ever saw was 30 feet across and weighed more than 600 pounds. <gasps> yes, but the average size, though, is, is more like 90 pounds. How much do you weigh, Smarty Pants? As much as a giant Pacific octopus? Maybe you are a secret octopus. The smallest species is the octopus wolfie. It's about the size of your thumbnail and weighs less than a postage stamp. They're so cute. Aww. Octopuses live in every ocean, and different species have adapted to different marine habitats. Many young octopuses inhabit shallow tide pools 
and move to deeper waters as adults. Since octopus anatomy contains no air bladders or gas pockets, they can inhabit waters much too deep for divers without special deep sea equipment, up to 5,000 feet. Maybe even deeper. <gasps> there are still plenty of mysteries surrounding octopuses. For example, what do you call a group of octopuses? I don't know. Trick question. There is no official name for a group of octopuses because they're loners. These solitary creatures live a simple life, stalking their prey, usually at night, exploring, sleeping, even dreaming, scoping their surroundings for a mate, and laying up to 400,000 eggs before they die. No wonder they want to sneak out of their tanks. Hey, there goes another one now. A big shout out to our big fans, Freddie, Sophia, and Ruby in Aurora, Illinois. Thanks so much for listening to Who Smarted. This episode, Octopuses, was written by Libby Ward and voiced by Charlotte Cohn, Brandon Bayless, Max Kamaski, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. <laughs>